welcome to Below Average Gaming. I'm your host, the Below Average Gamer. Just wanted to come back because I just went and I saw Suicide Squad last night. I went to the 1110 showing, came back, went to sleep, woke up, and uh, I was kind of talking about it on the uh, server here. Can't see it anymore. But I was talking about it on the server here and just kind of my thoughts and opinions of what I thought, but I, I was trying really hard not to give spoilers. So I figured I'll just do this video. Um, I'm going to let you know right now, just right now, there are going to be a lot of spoilers. A lot of spoilers. Nothing um, really plot-wise. I don't think I have anything to say. I don't think I have anything to say plot-wise with the movie. Just mainly um, what I thought of some of the characters and some of the uh, ideas represented in that movie. I'll say I thought it was good. I thought it was an okay movie. Um, it was watchable. And the best way to put it is it wasn't not good. <laughs> it was not not good you know it, it was watchable to an extent um and it delivered everything that they said they would deliver so i mean i can't be disappointed but i'll just talk about it so just spoiler alert first thing first i just want to say you know i'm going to be talking a lot about some of the stuff in the movie that people will regard as spoilers just some of the characters who show up um my feelings on some of the characters portrayals yeah, not, not a lot of plot-heavy stuff, but I know some people are going to get a little butthurt about, you know, specifically some of the stuff that I say. So let's just go ahead and hop right into that <laughs> so that you guys can get on to just yelling at me and calling me wrong. First thing, um, the Joker. In my other video, I talked about how reviews were saying that the Joker was used very sparingly. They thought he could have been used more. I have to say, I disagree with that. Now that I've now seen the movie, um, I do disagree with that. I think that the Joker was used for the right amount. I feel like if they if they used him anymore, it would be going against the plot because he was used he was used for every scene and every part of the story that they needed to use him in. Anything else would just be excessive for the fact of like, look at we have the Joker in the movie, ha ha. We we told you we'd have it and we do have it. So they do have the Joker in there. Um. Spoilery part, Batman's actually in the movie. Ben Affleck's Batman from Batman vs. Superman is in the movie. This takes place, um, this movie takes place pretty much right after the death of Superman in Batman vs. Superman. So right after that death is, um, where this movie takes place. Um, and that's one of the things, is they're talking about, they keep on talking about the next Superman. What if the next Superman who falls out of the sky isn't on our team? What if the next Superman decides that he just wants to kill the president or kidnap the president or whatever? You know... It's that idea of, like, we got lucky the first time, but what are the odds we'll get lucky a second time? You know, now that the world knows that aliens exist, now that the world is aware that there are super men, super beings in the world, what are they going to do about it? And, uh, thusly, Suicide Squad. You know, they come up with that, and one of the things I kind of, I don't know how I felt about it, was the fact that Enchantress is, uh, Enchantress is the witch character, and they're pretty much trying to stop her from taking over the world, um, which is her main goal, which is uh, really interesting, because the whole time Enchantress, we knew Enchantress was going to be a big part of the movie, because she is one of the more powerful characters in the DC universe, so, oh, hello, goodbye, so I think we all kind of knew, or a lot of people knew, that she was going to be something big in the movie, now Joker's part we really didn't know and there was just something that I kind of didn't like about the Joker in this one. And that's pretty much... that's the, And the thing I didn't like is the thing that a lot of people love about the movies. Everyone's like, oh, look at Joker and Harley, relationship goals. He's going to the end of the door to find her. Because that's his whole point of the movie, is that he's trying to get Harley back. He's, like, damaged and crying, and he's, like, sitting in that circle of knives from the trailer. Like, I want to get Harley back. I need to get Harley back. Whereas in the comics, he almost seemed to not... Comics, I should say the cartoon where Harley was first introduced. In the cartoons... Joker seemed to not really care about Harley, more that it was like a fun little experiment that he had of turning her into one of his like henchmen, and he didn't see her as anything beyond that. Um, yeah, they had like a little romance, but it was almost kind of only when it was convenient for the Joker. Whereas someone's outside, someone came to visit me. Oh, Arden. Hey, Arden. Here we go. But, I mean, in this movie, he's, like, going to the ends of the earth to find her. Which, it's like, if you're gonna do that, at least have some character development of him not really caring about her first. 
That way it's a bigger thing that he's suddenly showing emotion towards her. Because, like I said, I was hoping for that classic Harley Quinn. They gave you the, they give you the classic Harley. She calls him Puddin. She calls him Mr. J. She has the, the accent. She does everything that you'd expect her to do. And that's what I thought she was perfect, is the fact that they're in the car and she even says the quote like, let's let's get him Puddin, or something like that. Something along those lines. I was like, I got shivers. I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly the Harley Quinn that everyone's been wanting. They didn't screw this up at all. It's the same thing as Deadpool. It was like spot on transfer from pop culture into the movie. But then they had to go ahead and just ruin that by make by they pretty much it almost seemed like the person who wrote this character in the story and who wrote the the love triangle or not the love triangle the love aspect I'm trying to do like five things at once sorry the love aspect of this movie has never seen Batman the animated series which is where Harley Quinn first originated and that kind of got me upset because I was like you know they're not getting the point in that. She is in a, an abusive relationship, but just refuses to admit it. That's kind of the thing with her, is that she's in that abusive relationship. She refuses to admit it, and believes that she can somehow still help Mr. J. She can somehow still make him better. Because she does honestly believe that he's sick, but she believes it in a good way. And they don't really go into this whole thing of... Here's what I think they should have done. Let me, let me put it this way. They should have done more building of the background of where the relationship between her and the Joker came from. They should have done more to build that. I feel like I feel like they they honestly didn't do enough. Did I have glass bottles? Or I don't have glass bottles. I feel like they honestly didn't do enough to build that backbone of the relationship between these characters. They just kind of were like, oh yeah, and then she's in love, almost like hypnotically. Like she just decides like one day, like, oh, I I love him and I'll do anything for him. But they don't show the building of that. They show her not really caring. Then they show her... It was in the third one. It was in like the first one I checked. Um, and then they show her like devoted to him in every way. And I was like, you know... You, you kind of... You, you missed a big opportunity there. They didn't show the evolution of the character. They just kind of were like, oh yeah, here's Harley Quinn. You know who she is. Whatever. She's the reason you came to the movie, right? Come on, man. How can I get this thing full? I'm going outside. But they, they, they didn't really show the evolution of the character, which I think is one of the biggest things with Harley, is the evolution of her from being, you know, this applauded scientist, this applauded psychologist, to being Harley Quinn. But instead they were just like, oh, here's Harley Quinn. Uh, let's give you a little bit, a little taste of what she is. So, I don't know. I feel like they missed a point there to make her more of a drastic change in character. What else? Oh, I told you I don't like the Joker. Let me let me kind of go more into that. Like I said, he's... Hold on, let me get this order right. There we go. He's not quite as chaotic. He, in fact, they have him like going to nightclubs and stuff like that, which I did not like at all. Like the fact that he's in these nightclubs just hanging out, and it's like, excuse me, that's supposed to be the most terrifying person in all of Gotham. And he is. He is terrifying. It's just not in the sense that I wanted to see the Joker. He's a thug just like any other thug in the movie. Like, he's 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 just like any other... He's basically Falcone. They make him into the Falcone of, of this movie. <clears throat> he's a gangster. He's a thug. He's just some dude with a lot of money doing stuff. That's another thing, is that they gave him a lot of money. Like, he's got the nice car. He's got the sports coat, stuff like that. And I thought, you know, how are they going to make this something that translates um, the comic book character, the mo the cartoon character, and the previous movies into this new character? And they didn't. They just made this new character and said, oh yeah, it's the Joker. And it was like, just... I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that this Joker was so drastically different. But it wasn't just that he was different, because I think people said the same thing about Heath Ledger. Like, oh, he's so different, he's just a pretty boy Joker, or whatever. This one was just so different and drastically off from the rest of the, the incantations of the Joker that it, it just, I, I didn't like it. I did not like this Joker at all. Joker's my favorite comic book characters. You know, I hated the original images that they put out, just like everyone else did. Then when they kind of explained it, kind of had him more acting, and they put out the trailers and stuff like that, everyone kind of came to love him, and I also came to love him. I was like, yeah, you know, cool character. We'll see where it goes. And then I watched the movie, and I was like, you know, there's nothing there. You didn't... 
I don't know. They did a couple homages to to um the comics, but then like that's it. They they felt it almost seemed like they felt like that's all they needed. They had that scene where she's wearing the classic Harley Quinn costume and the Joker's like holding her, dancing with her, like the introduction of her in the comic book franchise. Um and it's like that's all they had. Or they were like, Yeah, that, that we did that, so that's fine, people understand this is Harley and the Joker. And they left that alone. So I, I feel like they they missed they missed the mark with Harley and they missed the mark with Joker and they missed the mark big time on the relationship that those two have. They they decided to skip out on everything that makes that relationship that relationship. It's the fact that it is an abusive relationship. It's not a good relationship. It's really horrible in the fact that she is chasing him and he's not chasing her. And instead turned it around and had him chasing her the entire time as her being like his one like thing, big thing. When in the comics and cartoons, he did not care about her that much. He was always constantly just willing to let her go to save his own hide. I, I didn't appreciate that. Now, I can say, Deadshot was one of my favorite characters. You know, I feel like they got him spot on, the whole thing of um, him and his daughter. Because that's been a big thing with him, is that he's a character who is, has a daughter. He cares about his daughter. You know, he wants what's best for her. And I was scared they were going to cut that out of the movie just to make him just some big badass and be like, oh yeah, let's give him nothing to lose, just like all the other characters. But I like that they include that. Because him as the leader of the Suicide Squad, other than Rick Flagg, because they have that whole like back and forth thing. But him as the leader of the Suicide Squad, it was awesome to see him have that mentality that he is honestly the only one there with something to lose. And that's what makes him a good leader, is because he has to weigh the options. He has to look at this thing as a whole, and he has to be able to look forward in time. He's, he's one of the only ones, like even Captain Boomerang, um, Slipknot for the short while he was there, El Diablo. They don't really have to look at the next chapter of their lives. They can just focus on what's going on now. Whereas with him, he's a character who has to look into the future. He even comments where he's saying, like, my demands, and pretty much every single demand that he has is about his daughter. He says, I want her to be able to go to a good school. I want her to be able to go to college. I want her to be able to do all these things. Those are my demands. And it's like, wow, this is a character whose driving force is truly just his daughter. And I think um, the, the emotional connection that he and Rick Flagg have to one another, the reason that they butt heads, is because they are just so similar. Rick Flagg is fighting for his girlfriend the entire time. That's the only reason he's there. It's the only reason that he's doing any of this. And it is. it even shows when he has like the mental tricks that the Enchantress puts on him, is that though his dream that he has is just to be him and his girlfriend, and that's it. Him and June Moon. That's all he wants, is just him and June Moon together, and for everything going on to be a bad dream. And I thought that was really interesting, because that's pretty much the same mentality that Deadshot has, but they don't realize that they're both fighting for the same things. Oh, that was really interesting how they did that, and I liked that dynamic between the two of them. Um, what else? Oh, um, some of the cameos that I really enjoyed. They didn't really help the story at all, but they were really fun to have. Is um, Captain Boomerang versus The Flash. It was maybe a quarter of a second scene, but it was pretty funny, where they're just showing how Captain Boomerang ended up in uh, Bell Rev. So the scene opens up with him talking to this guy, and they're like, yeah, you know, we're partners, yeah, I can't wait to get back home, we can split this up, ha ha ha. And then Captain Boomerang, of course, double-crosses him, throws a boomerang at him, knocks him out. Um, flash appears, and at first they just show like a flash of lightning, and I'm like, oh, they're just gonna show a flash of lightning and say, oh yeah, that was the flash, you know the flash, whatever, let's move on. But I was really excited in the fact that they actually showed, um, I'm forgetting his name. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his name. They showed that actor is gonna be playing the flash in Justice League. Um, I'm sorry that I'm forgetting his name. He's such a cool actor, and he's such a cool character. But they showed him pretty much popping in as the flash, in full costume, just full scene of him just there, like in costume, talking saying, no honor among thieves, huh? And then, right back at it. And that's it. That's his scene. But they show him fully there, and I was like, that's awesome. And um, Batman is actually in the movie a little bit more than I would have liked to see, because it was Ben Affleck, and it was Batman from Batman vs. Superman. So you focus on that character when you see him. And they kind of just glanced over the fact that Batman was in the movie. <laughs> like, they're kind of like, like, he just kind of appears, and they're like, oh, here's how, here's, let me give you the reference for how he appears. Is, um, the people are asking Amanda Waller, you know, how did you get Deadshot? How did you manage to get him in jail? And she says, oh, it wasn't about me getting him in jail. It was about me just dropping subtle hints to the right people. 
And the next scene is Deadshot walking down an alley. Batman drops in behind him. They fight, and then he takes Deadshot away. There's some other stuff that happens, but they fight, and he takes Deadshot away. And I was like, you're not going to do a bigger reveal for the fact that the guy who was just in your last huge movie is popping up randomly. No one really knew how big of a part he was going to have in the movie, but there's that. <coughs> and uh, Deadshot kind of views Batman, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, kind of views Batman as the one thing that wrecked his entire world. Like, he was doing fine, he had a great job, he was making millions, you know, had a, had a daughter that he loved, that he enjoyed having time with. Um, that was like his world, and Batman took that all away from him. Which I thought was really interesting, because it, it even shows that a little bit throughout that he doesn't, like, he, he still, he doesn't blame himself, he doesn't blame his daughter, he doesn't blame the government, he doesn't blame anyone except for, oh, I fell in the thing, I hate when this happens, oh my god. He, he blames, um, oh, my potions are probably there. My potions, my potions, my potions. I only need one for now. I'm gonna go make some, uh, zombies. Only, hopefully some villagers. I only have 16 eggs, but I used, I had a full stack and I used that to make two. So hopefully this will make me a third one. But, you know, it's just, I thought it was interesting that he doesn't blame, he's such a complex character, but he doesn't have the ability to blame anyone else for what's happening except for Batman. I like, I liked the character of Deadshot. I didn't think I was going to. I love Will Smith, but I felt like this was a really odd character for him to play. Having, um, the, the, having, like, the most recent <laughs> superhero connection being Hancock. But I, I, I don't know. I thought it was, I thought he was a good character. I liked that character. Um, I liked El Diablo a lot. Um, and just the whole idea behind him as the character who's, like, he's really the strongest character there. He could, it's shown him, like, obliterating, and even talk about, like, the fact that he could obliterate everyone in the room if he really wanted to. But it's the fact that he does not want to. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. He really... Oh, hey. What are you wearing? What is on your head right now? Okay. Got me a little bit. But, you know, just that character who's so powerful but just wants to keep whatever it is inside of him back. And he doesn't even know how he got his powers. He doesn't even know any of that. He just knows that he got them one day. And he has them now. And he regrets it, and he wishes that he doesn't. He wishes that he didn't have them. He blames himself for all the damage done. And I like that that was a complex character. I feel like the characters that should have been the most complex. I'm just gonna see here for a second, so I can, I'm dying. I feel like the characters that were the most complex, the characters who, the characters that should have been the most complex, should have had the most backstory, and should have been a huge driving force of this movie. That being um, the Joker and Harley. And maybe even their connection to Batman. Maybe the fact that she blames Batman for the fact that she's in jail. But they don't. They don't blame Batman at all. They don't even talk about him. I don't think they even say his name. Um, those three and the connection between them, Batman, Joker, and Harley, could have been a huge driving force for the entirety of the movie. But for some reason or another, they chose to ignore that completely. Um, and do big backstory for... El Diablo and Deadshot, which again, I appreciate that they did that. I appreciate those characters. They even did a little bit for Katana, too, and then Rick Flagg as well had the whole driving force behind everything going on. They don't go into a lot of his backstory, but they, they do a lot of stuff to show that he has a driving force in him. June Moon gets a little bit, um, as well as the Enchantress. Everyone gets a little bit flushed out. But I think that they, I, the biggest thing with me is I think they missed the opportunity to really show that connection between the Joker, Harley, and Batman. I think that's what everyone really wanted, was they wanted they wanted to see Batman. Okay, but if they did, everyone kind of wanted to see him and the Joker. And in that same frame, they wanted to see the Joker and Harley. And they gave us Joker and Harley, not in the, but they gave it to us in a way that wasn't congruent with, with the Joker and Harley that we were supposed to have, in my opinion. You know, the, the whole um, damaged relationship. That he does not care about her, but she cares about him. And they, they, they throw all that out the window. And then it was like, okay, well, at least we'll have the Joker versus Batman. No, we don't. They, they, it's pretty much the whole thing that happens between the Joker, Batman, and Harley that gets her put in Belrev, or put, gets her put in Arkham and then transferred to Belrev, is ignored completely. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot that was missing there. And I feel like, I feel like this, is, this movie is... <coughs> Everyone went in kind of saying this is going to be the makeup 
for Batman vs. Superman. For everything that they didn't do right in Batman vs. Superman, they're gonna fix in this movie. And I feel like they didn't, you know, they really made it a lot worse. If you put these movies side by side and using this as the sequel, because that's what it is. It honestly, it comes right after the death of Superman and what to do about that. Suicide Squad is a sequel to Batman vs. Superman. It's the sequel in every way. You know, it's not a spiritual successor. It's not a prequel. It's not anything. It's, it's, it's a sequel. It's number two. It could have been Batman vs. Superman number two. But it, it's a storyline that goes very congruent with that. With Batman vs. Superman. And I think, you know, that's the flaw here. I liked, I liked the storyline that it does happen. But it's the fact that it's a sequel to a movie that everyone was saying was very, very bad. Um... But they had really high hopes for it. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's a sequel, and everyone was saying, Oh, you know how sequels are always better than the original? No, no one knows that. No one gets that. That doesn't happen. Sequels are never better than the original. You're using the same formula that you had for Batman vs. Superman. I just don't want to idle out. You're using the same formula that you used for Batman vs. Superman, and you're not changing anything. You're just hoping that it works if we do it a second time. So, I mean... Like I said, the movie wasn't not good. It gave us a lot that we were promised. It gave us a team of villains. It was funny in some cases. It was kind of funny. Um, it was a story. There was a storyline. You know, the characters had sacrifices. Some characters had really fleshed out backgrounds and what they were fighting for. But it, they just they they wasted a lot of ammunition on the wrong characters. Uh, creative creative voice. I feel like they, they could have really flushed out. Like I, I, I don't know how, how much more I can say it. The fact that they could have flushed out some of the other characters more. And I feel like they missed an opportunity. But that's just my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think in the um, about the movie, about what I said, about your thoughts on the movie. Am I right in saying you know that they missed a lot of opportunities? Am I wrong? And you think that the movie was perfect? You think that they 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 really got those characters right? Because you know I could be wrong. It's a real possibility. This is my opinion. That's a good possibility that I am wrong. Would I go see it again? Mm, probably not. Not in theaters. Because I don't want to say it was a waste of money. Because I liked watching the movie. Like I said, it was not a not good movie. But I'm just, you know, I was kind of disappointed in what they brought to the table. Because, you know, like I said in my other one, it, they, it seemed almost like they wanted to be a combination of Deadpool and Guardians of the Galaxy. And they even they used one of the songs from Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was like, if you're trying to compare this to another movie, don't use a song from that movie. They use um Spirit in the Sky. They use Spirit in the Sky as they're flying over. And I'm like, that's that song's directly lifted out of Guardians of the Galaxy, out of the movie that you're trying to mimic the success of. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I have really mixed emotions about this movie. But again, like I said, let me know in the comments. I'm going to let this guy um, heal, see what we can get out of him. He's shaking, right? Oh! Here we go. I have some, I have some raw flesh. Some rotten meat for you. i just give you all that. All that salty goodness. Because I've done a lot of ranting recently, and I haven't done a lot of playing. Um, you know, like I always do, where I just go in and I heal these people. Because I'm a healer. I care about people. So let's get this. Let's get all the rotten flesh that I... Oh, there was one in there, actually. All the rotten flesh that I have. And we can kind of flush out what this guy's got going on. In here... I don't know why. I can never see rotten flesh until I'm about to, like, exit the chest. Okay, that should be enough. Hello, central.ga. These guys, they always give the same things. Every now and then you get something decent from them. But these paladin ones, they don't really... They're great for just turning rotten flesh into emeralds. <coughs> but it is at such a consistency. Like, it is that you need so much <coughs> to get an emerald that it's, it tends to not be worth it a lot of the time. They, 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 they manage to make rotten flesh be something that I want and at the same time <laughs> I want it so badly that there's nothing I can do unless I have large sums of it. So 
So I'm getting like what? Seven emeralds? Because I only get one per stack. I guess like one in eight tenths per one in four fifths per stack, I should say. It's such a bad trade. And he's gonna come running out of here as soon as I open the door. Okay. Let's get you in here, pal. I gotta get you into the uh, the pin. You're gonna be a breeder because you don't have any good trades. Six for one. You, that's a bad trade. You're not good at your job. You're not good at your job. Go. I'm excited for Justice League. I mean, I saw a post on Tumblr today um, from Shower Thoughts that was, re it, you know, it summed up what I think about the DC and Marvel movies right now. Um, is that I watch every Marvel? It says I watch every Marvel movie, anticipating that it's going to be the bad one. And I watch every DC movie, hoping that this is going to be the good one. And I was like, that is spot on. That is a really good definition for what happens with the DC and Marvel movies. Is the fact that, yeah, every time I watch a Marvel movie, um, or I see a Marvel movie coming out, I always think, like, this is going to be the one that sucks. And I think the same thing about uh, Doctor Strange, where I'm like, so this is the one that sucks. This is the one that ruins the winning streak for Marvel. And, uh... I watch every DC movie that's coming out, I see the trailers for it, and I'm like, maybe this will be the good one. You know, maybe this will be... The, I saw the Wonder Woman trailer. It looks okay. Um, they haven't... Or there's no, like, real plot yet released for it. And I've heard that's the issue with DC, is they never really have a plot. Um, it seems like they just get all the characters together. They get the characters like, Wonder Woman, let's just start filming and see where it goes. Batman vs. Superman, let's just start filming and see where it goes. Suicide Squad. Let's get all these characters together, and we'll just see where it goes. And it's a huge downfall because they're putting the, the characters, they're putting the name of the franchise in front of the characters, which sucks um, because it leads to some not great movies. But you know, uh, whatever. I'm I'm going into the next movie, Wonder Woman, hoping that it's the good one, hoping that this is the good one. So I don't know. I think that'd be really funny because she's always been the character in Justice League and stuff that I felt like they included because they were like, oh, we need a woman character and they include her and then she's become like the biggest badass of the franchise so far. Everyone that I talk to is, tells me like Wonder Woman was the best part of Batman vs. Superman. And I agree. I agree. She was probably my favorite part of Batman vs. Superman. I was in. So I'm excited to see where her movie goes. I feel like there's a lot of mistakes that can be made here. Ah. But hopefully every single one of them gets addressed and fixed. There we go. Anyway, thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you coming. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you. You're the best. Bye.